Uh, today we're going over section 2.4, which is solving radical equations graphically. To solve an equation like the square root of x minus 2 minus 1 equals 0 graphically, first we will rearrange the equation so if a radical, also known as a root, is on its own. We then graph each side of the equal sign as two separate functions. Where they intersect is our root. For example, square root of x minus 2 minus 1 equals 0. So, first thing I would do, like I said, is rearrange my equation to get the root on its own side, so add one to both sides. At this point, I change that into two separate equations. So we've got y is equal to the square root of x minus 2 and y equals 1. Now I'll do a table of values for my x minus 2. So I've got x and I have root of x minus two. Now when determining what values of x to use here, I'm gonna look at this equation because I know I can't have a negative in here, which means for example, I can't use zero because zero minus two gives me negative two. So the lowest number I could have in here would be positive two because two minus two gives us zero. So I'll start at two and then do a couple terms. And then do more if needed. So if this first one gives me 2 minus 2, so the root's at 0. So at 2, we are at 0. Next one, I have square root of 3 minus 2, which is square root of 1, which is 1. Now for next several, I know will give me decimal numbers, so I'm gonna choose a number for x here that's gonna give me a perfect square inside here. So this perfect square is one, my next perfect square is four, so if a number that give me a four in here would be a six, because if I have square root of six minus two, that's square root of four, which gives me two, so at six I'm at two. And my graph will look like that. Now for the y equals one, whenever you have y equals something, that's just a horizontal line at that y value. Now we're trying to find our answers where they intersect, which is right here. That So therefore, we will find our x value there which is three. Next example, we've got square root of three x plus one plus x equals nine. So do the same thing as before, so rearrange it. So I've got root of three x plus one equals negative x plus nine. Now I'll do my y equals root of 3x plus one. Do a table of values. Now on this one, I know I can go as well as zero because I could even go as a fraction, but I'll just keep my x as this whole number source. If I put zero in for this, that's gonna give me one, so I'll start with a zero. So that's root of three times zero plus one. So that's square root of one, which is one. So at zero, I am at one. Then I'm gonna see which numbers putting in here will give me Uh, 
strategy for this one, I'll just end up gradually increasing these and get the values of my calculator. So I have root of three times one plus one, which is two. So one we're at two. Next one I have root of three times two plus one, six, so that's seven. So square root of seven is 2.64. So at two, we are at 2.64. Next one, we have square root of three times three plus one. So that would be square root of 10, which is 3.16. Next one, we have three times four plus one, which gives us 13. So square root of 13 is 3.6. Next one is five. So we have three times five is 15 plus one. So 16, square root of 16 is four. So our graph will look something like that. Now the other part of our graph is going to be from y equals negative x plus nine. This is a linear function, so we know we have a y-intercept at nine with a slope of negative one. And we can see from our graph that our answer is x is equal to five. Next example, this one's already rearranged for us. So I'll just graph y equals x plus 10 first. So we have a y-intercept at positive 10, that's a slope of positive one. So we go up one over one or down one left one. And we can see our graph looks like this. Next one, we have y is equal to the root of negative 2x plus 4. Now looking at this, I can see that the largest x value I can have would be positive 2. The reason for that is if I put positive two in here, negative two times two gives me negative four, plus four gives me zero. Now, if I want, if I want a higher number like three, you can not give me negative six in here, negative six plus four would give me negative two, so I can't do that. So I'll have to go down numbers. Okay, so at two, I am at zero. I've skipped over, I'll probably skip one as well because I know it's not going to jump way up here. I'll go to zero, which I know is easy to calculate for this one. Because negative two times zero plus four gives me square root of four, which is two. So at zero, I am at two. And then I know from looking at this, the next perfect square I'll get will be if I put in negative six. 
So I have negative two times negative six plus four. So negative two times negative six is 12 plus four is 16. So that gives us four when we take the square root of it. We can see our answer is here where x is equal to negative six. Now practice work for a section is on page 137, numbers four to six and 15.